Screen Directors Playhouse, star Norma Shearer, production Waterloo Bridge, director Mervyn Leroy. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Tonight, the screen directors are honored to present the very beloved and distinguished star, Miss Norma Shearer, in Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's screenplay of Robert Sherwood's drama, Waterloo Bridge. Now, ladies and gentlemen, transcribe the first act of Waterloo Bridge, starring Miss Norma Shearer in the role of Myra. The year was 1939. A regrettable year, miserable, dark, maniacal. War crowds long gathered and able to carry their swollen burden had come apart at the seams. The Nazi vulture was in the throes of spreading his vicious tentacles to entrap the world. On Waterloo Bridge, hair streaked gray, Colonel Roy Cronin stood staring at an object in his hand. Tenderly, he looked at the good luck charm, and caressingly, he held it. In his eyes, there was a look of loneliness. It was as if he was searching into the past, groping desperately for the happiness and heartbreak that began here on Waterloo Bridge in another war. The First World War, 1917. It's a long way to love. It's a long way to forever. My bag, my stupid bag. I always drop it when there's trouble. Never mind your bag now, miss. They're out to straight this bridge. We better get in the shelter. Come on. Not till I pick up my good luck charm, Captain. You little fool, are you tired of life? I've had it for years. It brings me luck. Such as air raids? Oh, thank heavens, I've found it. Now, Captain, do you think it would be unmilitary if we were, were to run? Let's go. <laughs> Come along. Hurry. Mm, that one was close. Well, we're safe here. There may be some space over there by the wall. Shall we wriggle through? All right. <laughs> Excuse us, please. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, let us through, please. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Here we are. Better, huh? Oh, yes, thanks. Much better. Were you out walking alone? <laughs> no. I lost my friends in the crush. I hope I'm not late for the theater. Are you an actress? No, I'm a dancer. Madame Olga Kirova's International Ballet. You, uh, pirouette and all that sort of stuff? Oh, certainly. I can do an entrechat seat. I beg your pardon? <laughs> I can cross my feet six times in midair. Wow. Nijinsky could do it ten. But that only happens once in a lifetime. It must be good for the muscles of the... Must be good for the muscles. I should think a dancer's muscles would be like a strong man. Oh, not quite. That would be dreadful. We try to combine slenderness with strength. I've been dancing since I was 12, and... I don't think the muscles are overdeveloped. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, not in your case. Of course, we have to train like athletes. Madame believes in rigid discipline. I, I wish I could go to the theater tonight. Oh, why don't you come? No, unfortunately, I have a colonel's dinner, and it takes a lot of nerve to miss a colonel's dinner. Are you home on leave? I have been. My home's in Scotland. And now you have to go back to, to, to France, I mean? Tomorrow. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, this dreadful war. I suppose it is. Yet... Around the corner of every second, there's the fascination of the unknown. We're both facing it this instant. Oh, we face the unknown in peacetime, too. You're rather a matter of fact, aren't you? Yes. You're rather romantic, aren't you? Well, I never enjoyed an air raid more. (laughs) Shall we go now or wait for the next one? Oh, it's very tempting, but I I think we'd better go. Uh, Shall I carry your purse? No, no, I I only drop it in emergencies. Well, I hope I'm around the next time it happens. It isn't very likely, is it? You go back to France and I... And you? We may go to America. Oh, that does sound unlikely. I'm sorry. So am I. So late, I'm I'm afraid I'll have to take a taxi if if I can get one. I wish I could have... (laughs) (laughs) What were you going to say? Well, I I wish I could have seen your ballet. I'm sure it would have been a pleasant memory in the trenches. What were you going to say? Oh, just that I... I don't know anyone at the front. And I'm afraid it'll bring it home to me now, knowing you. Not that I really know you, of course, but... Oh, here's a cab. Oh, cabby! 
Thank you very much, Captain. I hope you get back safe and sound. Thank you. Here, take this. Your, your good luck charm. Perhaps it'll bring you luck. I hope it does. Oh, now, look here. I can't take it. It means so much to you. You'd better have it. I was beginning to rely on it too much. Well, that's wonderfully kind of you. Olympic theater, please, Cabby. Goodbye. Goodbye. he just came to see the show. You don't suppose anything of the kind. Don't you say he had to go to a colonel's dinner? That's not what I said. That's what he said. The number is finished. You can stop dancing. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hurry up and put the wings, Kitty. I want to point him out to you. There, there. In the front row. He's nice, isn't he? Yes. He's a bit of all right. Hmm. Must have ditched the colonel. <laughs> you don't think you come backstage, do you? <gasps> what would Madame say? Well, we must watch and pray. Girls, Kitty, Myra, Madame. Myra, what is a pas de bourre? A pas de bourre is a progression on points by a sequence of very small, even steps. If you know it, why do you not do it during the performance? And Kitty. Yes. Your arabesques were jumpy. They were positively epileptic. Uh, the doorman is calling. I'll, I'll see what he wants. The performance tonight was disgraceful. But, I, Kitty, that note. I will just hand it to you. Bring it to me. Oh, it's nothing. Hand it to me. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's just an old friend, a, a man I used to know in a show. I do not need to be reminded that you were an American chorus girl in a review. Your behavior... Madame. Keep out of it, Myra. No, Kitty. It, it's for me, madame. Then you may read it. Aloud, please. But, madame, I... Read it, please. As you see, I cannot bear to spend my last evening with my colonel after all. Please have supper with me, your friend of the shelter. P.S. I'm sure you will, because I have a good luck charm which has already changed and my life. And the signature? There isn't one. And if there were one, what would it be? I don't know. I only know he's an officer, madame. Indeed. I must emphasize again that if you want supper parties, officers, and delights, you should not be here with me, but in other occupations. Kitty, a pen and papier, please. Yes, madame. War is no excuse for indecorum, my girl. You do not honor the ballet with your presence in it. The ballet honors you. The pen and paper, madame. Set it on the table. Now write, please, Myra. Yes, madame Giroa. Dear sir, what is his rank? Uh, Captain. Dear Captain, I am greatly honored by your kind invitation, but regret that I cannot... Well, Captain, Captain, well, uh, wait a minute. I beg your pardon. I'm Kitty, Myra's friend. Uh, where do you want to meet her? Uh, Myra? Uh-huh. Oh, well, how do you do? I do very well, thank you, but where do you want to meet her? Well, I, uh, she refused. Oh, take no notice. The old dragon made her write that. You mean she'll come after all? Name the place. Yes, well, uh, d d d does she know the Candlelight Club? No, but I do. Well, good, then, uh, I'll be there in an hour, say? An hour. Uh, look here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. Myra's the finest girl in the world. You can see that, can't you? I can see that, Kitty. Uh, Bye-bye, Captain. Hello, Captain. Hello. I'm delighted you're here. I'm afraid I made it difficult for you with Madame Corova, haven't I? Well, you... You gave up the colonel... So I expect I made it difficult for you, too. Yes, you did. But I have my reward. It was wonderful of you to come. 
And how nice you look. Oh, thank you. And you look pretty, too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Say, uh, by the way, what do dancers eat? Oh, dull things, mostly. Nutritious, yet non-fattening. Oh, no, not tonight. Supper for a queen and champagne. Oh, but it isn't against the rules for a dancer to drink a bit of champagne, is it? Well, tonight... Good, it's icing in the bucket. Tell me, are you glad to see me again? Yes. I sense a reservation. Well, I suppose there is one. What? Why? Um, what's the good of it? You're a strange girl, aren't you? What's the good of anything? What's the good of living? That's the question, too. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm not going to let you get away with that. The wonderful thing about living is that this sort of thing can happen. In the shadow of a death raid, I can meet you and feel more intensely alive than walking around in peacetime taking my life for granted. Oh, it's a high price to pay for it. I don't think so. I do. Do people have to kill each other to... To give them a heightened sense of life. But that's got nothing to do with people killing each other. Either you're excited about life or you're not. You know, I've never been able to wait for the future. When I was very young, I climbed to the top branch of a high tree, stood like a diver and announced to my horrified governess, now I shall leap into the future, and spent three months in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you should let the future catch up with you more slowly. Oh, no, no, never. Temperament, I, I can't help it. Look here. If we'd met in ordinary times, in an ordinary way, we'd just about be telling each other what schools we went to. We're much further along, don't you think? Are we? You know we are. Let's open the champagne. To you. Thank you. To us. I... I still don't get it. Not quite. What? Your face. It's all youth. All beauty. Oh, but what is it you still don't get? Uh, you, you know, when I left you after the air raid, I, I couldn't remember what you looked like. Not for the life of me. I, I thought, was she pretty? Was she ugly? What was she like? I couldn't remember. I simply had to get to the theater tonight to see what you looked like. And do you think you remember me now? I think so. I think so... For the rest of my life. I'll write to you. Will you answer? Of course. Wonderful evening, wasn't it? Yes. Thank you very much. When I come back, we'll uh, we'll go to the Candlelight Club again. Yes. It, that'll be our place. That's where we'll always recapture this evening. Uh, do you think we'll ever see each other again? I think it's doubtful, don't you? Yes, I suppose it is. What was it you started to tell me in the restroom? That you didn't understand about me? Uh, there's no use going into it now. No, but tell me, please. I'd like to know. Well, it... It struck me as curious ever since I met you. It, you know, from that very early moment ages ago that you're so young, so lovely, and so defeatist. I mean, you... You just don't seem to expect much from life. Well, aren't I right? For instance, I met you... I liked you, and now, so soon, we have to part, and perhaps we'll never see each other again. You can conceive that, then, our never seeing each other again. Yes, I can. This where you live? Yes. Well, nothing to do about it, is there? Mm, nothing, except, well, except to say goodbye. I suppose so. Goodbye. Goodbye, Myra, dear. Goodbye, Roy. Oh, darling, darling. Oh, no, no, no. No, Roy. It can't happen. Oh. Keep well. Nothing can happen to me. You, your lucky charm will see to that. Oh, I hope it will. I pray it will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Please leave me first. 
All right. All right. <laughs> Captain. What time is it, Kitty? Hmm? Oh, it's half past eleven. Oh, come in. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning madame. madame. I came to congratulate you, Mara. On what, madame? On being up. Considering that you did not go to bed until four, it's remarkable. I have a feeling your performance tonight will give the effect of sleepwalking. Well, it's the first time Mara's been out, madame. Mara, when I made you send the note to the gentleman last night, it was you I was trying to protect. Yes, I know. I am fond of my girls who work for me. I do not want them to be uh, uh, camp followers. Oh, you don't know him or you wouldn't say that. Well, can't we have any private lives at all? Not when he hurts your public life in the theater. Myra, I'm happy he did not stay here a week. Otherwise, he would have ruined six performances instead of one. He's a wonderful man, madame. That is unimportant. If such a thing should happen again with you or any of the others, it means instant dismissal. I will see you at the theater tonight, if it is not too much trouble. Oh. Why is she so cruel and hateful? Oh, the old broomstick. Oh, never mind her. She spoils everything. Oh, rubbish. You're just upset and tired. Why don't you go back to bed? There's no rehearsal today. And Now, come away from that window. No, I'm not tired. What a horrible morning for the Channel Crossing. Well... I suppose he's gone now. Mm, I suppose so. Kitty. What? Kitty! He's downstairs. Oh, pacing back and forth. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, good heavens. Why, he's deserted. Kitty, he's here. He hasn't gone. He's here. He'll be court martial for this. Oh, Kitty. Oh, you see him too, don't you? Well, if that's his ghost, I could use one like him. Uh, now, get away from that window, you stupid ninny. He'll see you. I can't help it. Out of my way. Uh, oh, I've got to go. Where's my hat? Oh, oh why wasn't I good? Yes. little bag. Oh. Where is my hat? This is your hat. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, I can't wear my handbag on my head. Not very well. Kitty, is he still there? Oh. Is he gone? Will he wait? Do, do I look all right? Yes. Yes, you look all right. You look better with the dress on. Oh, oh dress, dress. <laughs> dress, where is it? The thing I'm holding is the dress. <gasps> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. How silly of me. Help me. Mm. Hurry, a, a little lower. Oh, Mara, will you stop oh, it? Oh, Hippie. Oh, goodness, I don't know what I'm doing. Say I you must don't. Be oh, dear, these stupid... Oh, here, let me help you. Kitty, stop Oh, I wonder around. if he's gone. Kitty, Kitty, he's gone. He's, he's gone. Then that thing by the tree must be a mirage. He's back. He's back. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. <gasps> I'm going. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going down the stairs first. You don't want to run into Madame on the way down. And for pity's sakes, please tell him no more false alarms. I can't stand the excitement. Darling, 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 darling. Oh, oh Roy. Oh, nice of you to come and see me. Don't talk. Just let me kiss you. Oh, you... You didn't go? Couldn't. Mine's in the channel. 48 hours leave. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, darling, darling, darling. Let me hold you in my arms. But we're we're right out in the street. Everybody understands. Oh, 48 hours. Two whole days. Oh. You know, I thought about you all last night. I couldn't sleep a wink. Oh, you managed to remember me at last then? Yes, barely managed. (laughs) Myra, what do you think we're going to do today? Well, I... You, You won't have time for that. What? For hesitating. No more hesitating for you. No? No. Well, what am I going to do instead? You're going to get married. Oh, Roy. Roy, you must be mad. I know it. It's a marvelous sensation. Oh, do be sensible. Not me. Oh, but you don't know me. Then I'll discover you. Spend the rest of my life doing it. Oh, Roy, this is wartime. It's it's because you're leaving so soon. Because you because you feel that you must spend the whole of your life in 48 hours. We're going to be married. It's you. It'll never be anyone else. But how can you tell that? Now, listen, darling. None of your quibbling, none of your questioning, none of your doubts. This is positive, you see? Roy. This is affirmative, you see? This is final, you see? You're going to marry me, you see? <laughs> I see. Oh, kiss me, you... Oh. Forever. 
Come on, hurry. Cab! Come in, please, Captain. Uh, this is Miss Lester, Vicar. How do you do, Miss Lester? How do you do? I'm sorry to disappoint you, Miss Lester, but I'm afraid it's impossible for me to marry you now. Oh. No doubt you forget that according to the law, no marriages can take place after three o'clock. I explained to the Vicar, Myra, that this is an emergency that we thought during wartime something could be managed. Oh, isn't there something we can do, sir? We'd be most awfully grateful. Oh, I'd like to help you, but unfortunately that is the law. However... If you'll come tomorrow at 11 o'clock, I shall be most happy to perform the ceremony for you. But we have so little time. Well, it's, it's only a few hours. It just means we'll, we'll have to be engaged for a whole day. <laughs> yes, darling, but I never did believe in long engagements. <laughs> Just in time for the performance, Madame will give her the sack. Oh, I tell you, I just tremble for that poor girl. Oh, you're always trembling, Maureen. Hello, Kitty. Well, where have you been? I've been worried to death. I thought you were with a boyfriend, but he phoned a couple of times. Oh, did he? Mm -hmm. I wonder why. He had to go back to the barracks, and I went shopping. Here. What's in those packages? Open them up. Oh. Myra. Who, whose dress is that? It's mine. It, yours? Yes, I spent my last penny on it. Are you crazy? <laughs> oh, quite, quite. And I bought a hat, a lovely hat, and the shoes, and a bag, and then gloves. Oh, isn't it a dream, Kitty? It's my wedding dress. Myra. Oh, you don't mean me. Yes. yes, I'm going to be married. Oh, darling, darling, come here and let me hold Oh, isn't it wonderful? Oh. Well, tell me where, when, how quick. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning at St. Matthew's Church. Oh, Kitty, I'm so madly in love. So madly happy. Oh, darling, I, I can't believe it. <laughs> Neither can I. <laughs> I'm silly, but I'm trying. I've been, I've been trying all day. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Things like this it just don't happen. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, what a joke on Madame. I'll get it. Hello? Miss Lester? One moment, please. A gentleman, Myra. That must be Roy. Hello? Hello, darling. Yes? What? Oh, no. When? Oh, that's terrible. Can't they give you one more day? You have to? Oh, of course I'll come at once. I love you. What is it? What happened? Oh, the order's been changed. He's going tonight. The train leaves in ten minutes. Where are you going? I'm going to see him off. Going where? Oh, to, to Waterloo Station. But you can't. You won't be back in time for the show. My will be off. Oh, I don't care. Oh, Myra, please. She'll never forgive you. Never. I may never see him again. Darling, what's wrong? He's gone. You talked to him? No, Kitty, I was too late. Didn't you see him at all? Oh, just a glimpse. Oh, what a shame. I knew it would happen. I knew it from the start. Oh, he'll be back. <laughs> the war can't last forever. No. He won't be back. Good evening, Myra. It is very condescending of you to come here at all. She's very unhappy, madame. Her fiancé was called to the front. I'm not interested in two movements. She was to be married in the morning. Nor in social events. Well, the whole world doesn't begin and end with a ballet. My world does. And while you are with me, so must yours. That prescription no longer applies to Myra. Oh, don't sack her, madame. I warned you, Myra. 
You are dismissed. <laughs> I've never heard of anything so unreasonable. Be I... careful. <laughs> no, I won't be careful. <laughs> oh, don't, Kitty, don't. Don't you worry, Myra. I'm fed up with her. I've been wanting to tell her for two years. And now I'm going to tell you, madame. And if you don't like it, you can lump it. I'm sick of you and your tyranny. You treat us like a lot of slaves and call it discipline. Well, it, it isn't that. It's, well, it's just that you enjoy bullying us. Maureen. Yes, madame? Rehearsal tomorrow at 11 with two understudies. Yes, madame. Good night. Kitty. Kitty, you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. It's, oh, it's all my fault. Oh, forget it. I'm sick of ballet. I'm sick of being highbrow with my feet. You and I, Ducky, are going to get into a review. All we got to do is get some manager to put one on. <laughs> that ought to be simple. Uh, Kitty. Yes? Do you think... Occasionally. What? Do you think you're right? Honey, answer one question for me. Yes. Does a monkey eat bananas? Second act of Waterloo Bridge, starring Miss Norma Shearer, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse, brought to you by Extra Mild Fatima, best of all king-size cigarettes. In Fatima, the difference is quality. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Now, here's Jack Webb, the star of Dragnet. If you smoke king-size cigarettes, listen to Fatima's amazing new offer. Buy a pack of Fatimas, enjoy their extra mildness, and see if you don't like Fatimas better than the king-size cigarette you're now smoking. If you don't, return the pack with the unused Fatimas, and we'll give you your money back, plus postage. Now, we make this offer because we believe Fatima is the best of all king-size cigarettes. Smokers all over the country are confirming this every day. Listen to this state-by-state -state report. State 1, Fatima sales up 92%. 2, sales up 72%. Three, sales up 107%. Four, Fatima sales up 192%. Remember, if you're not convinced they're better than your present king-size cigarette, return the pack and the unsmoked Fatimas before December 1st and get your money back, plus postage. That's Fatima, Box 37, New York 1. Buy Fatima today. And now we continue transcribed with the second act of Waterloo Bridge, starring Miss Norma Shearer in the role of Myra, with Carlton Young as Roy. <laughs> History tells that the condition of the world, and particularly London, in 1917 was perilous. Chaos and disorder replaced normalcy. Jobs were at a premium, money was scarce, and show business was at a standstill. People like Mara and Kitty were faced with a desperate situation. How to survive in their third-rate hotel room. Hello. Well, Mara... I didn't get the job. Oh, Kitty. How about you? Oh, no luck. We're a couple of howling successes. Sitting right on top of the world, aren't we? Well, you're in a nice mood, aren't you? And no wonder, sitting here in the dark, feeling sorry for yourself. Well, if I don't feel sorry for myself, who will? Trouble with you is you're hungry. You'll feel better when you have something to eat. Myra. Yes, Kitty? You're probably sick of hearing this. But honestly, why don't you let Roy know... That we're out of work? That we're broke, flat broke, down to our last bullion cube. Oh, he'd worry. I I don't want him to worry. Better for him to worry than for us to starve. Oh, Kitty, we're not starving. Nobody starves. You mean people who starve don't live to tell about it. I don't know what we're going to do. We can't get jobs in the show. We can't get them anywhere else. 
Oh, if Madame were still here, I'd, I'd go to her, pride or no pride. As it is, there's nobody. Oh, Mara, I'm frightened. I've never been frightened before. Oh, Kitty. I don't like it. I don't like Kitty. Oh, perhaps it's selfish of me not to let Roy know, but, uh, oh, I've got a stupid sort of pride about it. Just let me wait a little while, just, just a little while longer. Something m- must turn up, and if, well, if it doesn't, well... It's Mrs. Clark for the rent. Oh, now remember, you were rehearsing. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's right. Miss Lester, for you, Myra. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Seems like them as gets flowers could pay their rent. Flowers? Oh, here, here, let's see. Put, I put can't them imagine. Oh! oh. Oh, are they lovely. Now, who do you suppose? Mm. Kitty. Oh, it's Roy. Yeah, it's Roy. It's his handwriting. Oh, or two dozen. Oh, they're oh, they beautiful. Oh, they're so lovely. lovely. Oh, just oh, look enough at them. to buy them. food for a whole week. Oh, listen to what he wrote on the card. What? One of my men got leave, and you, you'll be receiving these through him. And with them, I send you all my love. We, uh, oh. uh, we, we could sell them to the florist at the corner, buy ourselves a real meal. Yeah, but I don't think you'd favor the idea. No. Oh, Kitty. His mother's coming here. To London? Yes, yes, listen. My mother is snatching a few days from her Red Cross work and is coming to town to specially see you. I know you'll get on well with her. She's very nice. In fact, in fact she's quite like me. Oh, K- oh Kitty, what'll I do? I can't have her here in this hovel. Why not? Let's give her a little party and boil the bouillon cubes. Well, I can suggest meeting her somewhere. For tea, perhaps. Oh, but Kitty, imagine his, his mother. Oh, I'm awfully nervous at meeting her. I wonder... What, you funny love-struck infant? Oh, I wonder if she'll like me. Well, she'd better. We won't invite her at all. I... My, darling, you're trembling. Oh, Kitty, don't you see that... Well, meeting her will be like... Like seeing Roy again. Oh. oh, you've been such a darling to me. And now perhaps I'll be able to repay you. You know, I... Oh, I have the feeling that from now on everything's going to take a turn for the better. I'm just sure it is. to order. Not yet, thank you. I'll wait for my friend. She's Lady Margaret Cronin, and I'm Miss Lester. If she should ask for me, will you direct her to me here? Certainly. What time is it, please? It's uh, ten minutes to five. Thank you. Would you care to look at the evening paper? No, thanks. Well, in that case... One one moment. What does that headline say? Uh, latest war casualties. Would you like to read them? No, no. Oh, yes. Well, here you are, Miss. Killed in action. Fallen officers. Ashley, Abernathy, Barber, Byrne, Blair, Ball, Busey, Brothers, Vinnie, Cronin. Cronin. Oh, Captain Roy Cronin. No. Oh, God, no. Oh. <gasps> the restroom and lie down a bit. No. No, I, I, I'd rather stay here. Take another sip of the brandy. It'll help. Thank you. <laughs> Better? Oh, yes. Sure. Uh, I'll be all right. Now sit quiet and rest. If your friend doesn't turn up, we'll call a test. Uh, Blair. A ball. Beauty. Brother. Benny. Cronin. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Are you Miss Lester? Uh, yes. I'm Margaret Cronin, Roy's mother. Uh, may I sit down? Yes, yes, of course. I'm afraid I've kept you waiting. I'm terribly sorry. Now, what do we have? Tea and some little cake? Uh, no, 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 thank you. I, I can't stay very long. Oh, I do hope you're not going to run off at once. Incidentally, I telephoned you from Scotland to the hotel where Roy told me you were staying, but they said you'd gone away. 
I, I have my mail forwarded. There, there are reasons. Oh, my dear, I didn't mean to pry. Forgive me, my dear, but you're not afraid of me, are you? I know we're going to be friends. I feel that I know you already through Roy's letters. And I want to write him and tell him that you and I have met and that we like each other very much. May I write him that? Yes, yes, of course. I suppose there are lots of things you want to know about Roy that I could tell you. And I'm sure there are things about him you could tell me. Oh, stop it. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. That's quite all right, my dear. Well, well, why don't they bring your tea? They're, they're, they're very slow, aren't they? Shall I call the waitress? No, no, don't bother. I'm in no hurry. Would you rather that I didn't speak about Roy? Oh, no, no. Why should you think that? But, but what is there to say? Forgive me, my dear. Have you been drinking? Oh, I... I had a drink, that's all. It's made me feel funny, sort of queer. Oh, uh, What's it like in Scotland? I, I've never been there. It always sounds so quaint, you know. The heather and the peat. Oh, but peat, peat, peat comes from Ireland, doesn't it? I, I've never been there. Why do you stare at me like that? I'm trying to see you as Roy sees you. Mara... I want you to remember that I tried to be your friend. I've come because Roy wanted me to come. Because I wish to. Perhaps we'll try again someday. Perhaps on Roy's next leave, he'll bring you to the country. Goodbye, Myra. three months, the physical condition of Mara fitted in with the hysteria of the world, a complete nervous breakdown accompanied by the dread influenza. As she slowly recovered, doubt assailed her as to how the room rent was paid, where the money for food came from, the doctor's bills, and medicine. Hello, Kitty. Get those wet things off. Double quick time, too. Oh, I fix your hot water bottle. Kitty. Oh, why did you go out? Kitty. Yes? How did the show go tonight? Oh, same as usual. Mm. Was it a good house? Mm. So-so. Why? I went to the theater. Thought I'd surprise you by calling for you. Huh? Oh, well, um... You see, Myra, I didn't want to worry you. You see, I'm in a... Well, a different sort of show than the one I said I was in. Yes, a a cheaper sort of show, so I... Kitty, you haven't got a job at all. You never did have one. How have we been living? What difference does it make? As long as we live. Where's the money coming from? Where are you getting it? Where do you think I've been getting it? I tried to keep it from you, but... Well... Now you know. Oh. You did it for me. Oh, no. I did not have done it anyhow. I... Stay the gear. No jobs. No boys who want to marry you. Only men who want to kill a few hours. Because... Because they know it may be their last. No. You did it for me to get me food and medicine. <laughs> oh, I'd sooner have died. No, you wouldn't. You think you would but you wouldn't. I thought of that, but I wasn't brave enough. I wanted to go on living. Heaven knows why. But I did, and so would you. Oh, we're young, and it's it's good to live. Even the life I'm leading, for God knows it. I've heard them call it the easiest way. Wonder whoever thought up that little phrase. I know one thing. It couldn't have been a woman. Kitty. Oh, darling, darling. Suppose you think I'm dirt. Oh, no, no, Kitty. I I guess it was just... Just no other way. No other way. <laughs> Now, 
here's a word from RCA Victor. Have you ever looked in the back of your television set? If you have, you've probably noticed the complicated arrangement of tubes, wires, and parts which help produce the picture on the screen of your picture tube. But when you think about it, the picture is only as good as the picture tube itself. That's why your picture tube is really the heart of your television set. And that's why it pays to insist on the best tube available, an RCA tube, when your present picture tube wears out. You see, every RCA picture tube is manufactured with precise quality controls at every stage of production, assuring you a clearer, brighter, sharper picture for a longer period of time. And now every RCA renewal picture tube carries a factory warranty that guarantees you against any defect in workmanship or material for six months from the date of installation. So regardless of the make of your set, ask your local repairman to install a genuine RCA picture tube. Then you're sure of enjoying the very best that your television set has to offer. Now the third act of Waterloo Bridge, starring Miss Norma Shearer. Hello, baby. Hello. Care for a bit of a stroll, huh? <laughs> what are we waiting for, dearie? Hello, Martha. How's luck? Well, I'm not exactly prepared to retire yet. Fine pulls in that water to it for. Oh, some of them soldiers are still on their feet, eh, Martha? <laughs> Hope so, Clarky. Cheerio. Cheerio. Hello, baby. See you around wherever I go. Care for a bit of a stroll, huh? Myra. Oh, the, the buns I've waited for this moment. Oh, darling. Roy. Oh, Roy. It's over, darling. It's all over. This time we're together for always. Roy, you're... Feeling better, darling. Roy, you're... You're alive. Of course I'm alive. Didn't you know I was indestructible? How could I die when we were engaged? Oh, but the papers... Were wrong. I was in a German prison for the better part of a year and then escaped. I came home to you. Uh, did my mother get in touch with you, tell you to meet me at the train? No. Well, then you didn't know I was coming? No. Then what were you doing at the station? Were you looking for a friend? Yes, sir. Uh... Uh, a girlfriend. I got a thousand questions. What have you been up to? Have you got a job? Where is it? What does it pay? I... I... I don't have a job. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to let you out of my sight this time. Not till we're married. You understand that? Oh, darling, you... You've been through a lot, haven't you? It's been, uh... It's been... It's been... Pretty tough, huh? And I wasn't there to help you. But that's all over now. I never want to see you cry again except with happiness. Oh, if only I had known you were alive. That you were in the world. I'll never leave you again, darling. You're coming home with me to my mother's in Scotland. We're leaving right away just as soon as I arrange the tickets. Uh, I, I can't go with you. It's, it's out of the question. Why? Please don't ask me, but I... I simply can't. But I've got to ask you, and you've got to tell me. Why, I... I look terrible for one thing. I, I, I haven't got any clothes. Well, Madame Conan to be, we'll see what we can do. How would you like to be the most smartly dressed woman in London? Uh, no, Roy, I, I can't. There's someone else, isn't there, Myra? After all, you thought me dead. There is someone else, isn't there? Don't be afraid. Tell me. Oh, Roy. Of course there isn't anybody else. There couldn't be. I loved you. I've never loved anyone else. I never shall. That's the truth, Roy. That's all I wanted to know. 
darling. Smile for a change. <laughs> I'll... I'll try. Have you forgotten how? Come on. Oh, that's a good girl. <laughs> oh, darling. I... I can't believe that I'm... that I'm with you again. But you are. Happy? Oh, oh yes. Personally, I'm delirious. Come on, we're going shopping. <laughs> What's this all about? What are all these packages? Oh, uh, have you taken to shoplifting? Oh, Kitty, darling. Roy's back. He's alive. R Roy? Kitty. Kitty wants to marry me. Oh, no. Such things don't happen. It's true. Oh, Kitty, it's going to be so wonderful. And for you, too. Oh, nothing will be too good for you when I'm Roy's wife. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Uh, I've been thinking, too. You, you think that'll be dreadful of me, don't you? Well, does he know? No. Well, do you think you can get away with it? Uh, you mean deceiving him? Yes. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm going to tell him. There are two sorts of people, Myra. Those who get the breaks and those who don't. Well, I'm getting the breaks now. And I'm not going to think. You remember? You once said that you wanted to live. Oh, well, I want to live. This is my chance for life, and I won't let him go. I guess there are no rules, Myra, for what you feel and what he feels. Kitty. Oh, Kitty. After all, if he's mad enough about you, may make up for everything. Oh, it must. It must. He's so kind, Kitty, so sweet and so clean and wonderful. I'll devote myself to him. After all, it's his happiness, too, Kitty. He he loves me. He's waited for me, and my... And, and in my soul, in my soul, I've waited for him. That's what really counts, isn't it? The, 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 just the soul? Yes. Yes, Myra, that's all that counts. Oh, Roy. Oh, it's beautiful. This has been our home for generations. We're awfully good together, don't you think? RSVP, that was a question that requires an answer. Yes or no? Uh, yes. Your answer's correct. <laughs> now, off to bed with you, darling. Big day ahead tomorrow. Good night, darling. Good night, my love. Mara, forgive me for waiting for you in your room. Oh, that's quite all right, Lady Margaret. I couldn't go to sleep without getting something off my chest. It's about our last meeting in London. You know, that has preyed on my mind ever since. Myra, do you bear a grudge against me? Oh, no, Lady Margaret. Frankly, I came with a prejudice. And when I saw you, you seemed strange to me. I thought you couldn't be, well, what I wanted Roy's wife to be. I've no excuse except a mother's excuse for wanting an impossible idea for her son. Can you forgive me? No, but there's nothing to forgive. When I got home the next day, I found the telegram telling me the dreadful news about Roy. And when I could think again, it suddenly struck me that you'd known all the time. That you'd just seen his name in the newspaper and you hardly knew what you were saying. Is that true? Yes. Oh, you poor child. If I'd only known. I did my best to find you, but you disappeared. And now I want to make it up to you in the future. I'm very happy about this marriage, Myra. And I know we're going to be wonderful friends. <laughs> Forgive me for being sentimental. Good night, my daughter. Don't go, Lady Margaret. I must speak to you. Why, of course, my dear. I can't marry Roy. Sit down quietly, dear, and tell me. I must go away. I... Uh, I never should have come here. I knew it was impossible, but I... I kept on deceiving myself. I've got to go away. I, I must never see him again. Well, perhaps if you'd hated me, if you'd fought me, I, I could have done it. But, well, you've all been so kind. My dear, why don't you tell me what it is? I'm sure I can help you. No, no one can help me. But, my dear, what can it be that's so terrible... 
Has there been someone else? <laughs> Lady Margaret, you're naive. My dear, Roy loves you. He's happy with you. That's enough for me. If there are indiscretions in your life, forget them. Face the future. <sighs> There's no future for me. Myra, look at me. Look at me. Can't you see? Can't you see the truth? Don't make me tell you. Myra. Yes. This thought in your mind, which you're telling yourself, can't be true. It is true. Myra. Oh, I can give you plenty of excuses. I was poor, I was hungry, I thought Roy was, was dead. I might make you understand, but it couldn't save me. I'll never see him again. But I... Well, I just can't tell him the truth myself. I can't hurt him like that. Promise me you'll never tell him. Promise me. I promise. Thank you. I'll leave early in the morning. You've been so kind. I wish I could have been... Oh, well, all that you'd hoped. <laughs> Myra. Roy. What are you doing prowling around at this hour? You been with Mother? Yes. Isn't she wonderful? Oh, yes, she is. I knew I wouldn't sleep, so I've been walking in the garden, confiding my good luck to the stars. Oh, were they pleased? Well, they seemed indifferent. They went on glittering, the little exhibitions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you ever see this good luck charm before? Oh, I think so. Oh, well, here. But I, I gave it to you. It's yours. I think it'll be safer with you. Just as I'll be. I dropped it in the garden a moment ago and I was frantic until I found it again. I think you'd better have it from now on because now that we're both, as they say, one, it really doesn't matter which one of us keeps it, does it? Brought me luck. I'll let it bring you luck. I'll keep it for you, Roy. Oh, I'm tired, darling. Yes, you look tired. It's been a strenuous day for you. Yes. Good night, darling. Goodbye, darling. Oh, why goodbye when it's only till morning? Oh, because... Because every parting from you is... Well, a little eternity. That's the way I feel, too. Goodbye. Goodbye, little sentimentalist. Tomorrow, all day to ourselves. Yes, my love. <laughs> Now, is it you, Martha? What? Oh, hello, Clarky. What you do with it on Waterloo Bridge? Heard you was married, Ducky. No. No, I'm not married. But Kitty, she told me. Said you'd got off with some tough. I knew it was too good to be true. Yes, just too good to be true. Oh, well, cheer up. Things can't get worse. Coming down to the station, dearie. Troop trains, do I hear? No, I... No. Oh, well. Clarky, do me a favor. Would you see that this good luck charm is delivered to this address? Sure, ducky. Hello, baby. Care for a bit of a... Well, I ain't seen you for a long time. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Come back, baby. Come back. Oh, no. The truck. The sand of time flows steadily and everlasting. Likewise, those we truly love are never forgotten. And while the years tend to cover all wounds, the scars remain, though invisible. And the heart remembers. As he stood at the parapet of Waterloo Bridge in the year of 1939, tenderly holding a very small charm in the palm of his hand, Colonel Roy Cronin lifted it to his lips. And with this gesture, all else, all the world except one voice was silent. And this voice he heard with exquisite clarity. I loved you. I've never loved anyone. 
anyone else. I never shall. That's the truth, Roy. I never shall. Thank you, Miss Norma Shearer, for a magnificent performance. Now, here's a message from the makers of Anison. If you would like to know a quick, easy way to ease the pain of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, then by all means try Anison. Your own dentist or physician may at one time or another have handed you an envelope containing Anison tablets. Then you already know how incredibly fast and effectively Anison brings relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. For your own sake, try Anison. Anison is sold to you on this guarantee. If the first few tablets do not give you all the relief you want as fast as you want it, you may return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. You can get Anison tablets at any drug counter. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. Now here again is tonight's star... Miss Norma Shearer. Thank you. Thank you. Now, may I say a few words about a very near and dear friend, the director of Waterloo Bridge, Mr. Mervyn Leroy. To tell of his accomplishments as a picture maker is needless, for his outstanding and brilliant record speaks for itself. More important as a man, his intense loyalty and graciousness and wonderful sense of humor have never changed through the years. May I present Mr. Mervyn Leroy. Thank you, Norma, for the vast radio audience that heard you tonight and myself. We have been greatly honored with your magnificent performance. It will long be remembered in our hearts and in our memories. We adore you, Norma. Always. No, oh, those are very kind words and so deeply appreciated, Mervyn. And it's so good to be back home again. And we're certainly glad to have you back. Norma, you've been traveling all over the world having a wonderful time. All over Europe, Switzerland, Paris, and American in Paris. Say, that's an MGM hit starring Gene Kelly, Leslie Caron, and Oscar Levant. <laughs> so I've heard. And speaking of hits... I understand your great spectacle, Covadis, which you directed for MGM in Rome, is definitely an Academy Award contender for this year's honors. Norma, the only thing I can say is I've got my fingers crossed. Speaking for the Screen Director's Playhouse and your millions of fans throughout the world, thanks. And I can't tell you how much we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Good night, Norma. Good night, everyone. You have been listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, brought to you by Extra Mild Fatima, best of all king-size cigarettes. In Fatima, the difference is quality. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. <laughs> Now we bring to a close this series of Screen Director's Playhouse presentations. Next week, during this hour, on most NBC stations, you will hear two new shows. The first, The Roy Rogers Show, starring Roy himself and lovely Dale Evans. And during the last half hour, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis return to the air. Waterloo Bridge was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin. Screen Director's Playhouse is under the production supervision of Howard Wiley and is directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking. For people in the know, Sunday means the big show on NBC.